We're back again. You've tuned in again because you have nothing better to do. It's unbelievable. But since you're here, we're here. We're going to bring some entertainment. This is episode 21 of the Bluegrass Race Hub, uh, brought to you by the Kinder Performance Group, Huffman Designs, Scott Fritz Designs, Butt Kicker, my f- personal favorite, Red Rocket Buildings <laughs> and Barbecue. Which I didn't know, so I assumed it was just a place that made buildings and they sold barbecue at the same time. But they also sell barbecues, which makes a lot more sense. But in my mind, they will forever just be a place that will sell me like a shed and also sell me a half rack of ribs. Um, Elevated outdoors, we know what we like to say. So I won't say it again. I won't run that joke into the ground. Last, certainly not least... WJM Motorsports, we're joined by one of their acolytes today, the bearded wonder, Cody Anderson in the 17. We've also got the HMFIC, Jason Collins, and your boy, Big Al. So let's get into it. All right, so jumping right into it, last week was Daytona week. Uh, We all know that can lead to some crazy results, especially being the last race headed into the playoffs. So all all of the ingredients were there for some wild racing, and and I think we delivered across all three series. Um, This is one I've been excited to talk about in the truck series. Not personally, my computer crashed as soon as we pulled off of pit road, so I didn't even get to be a part of this, but... But one of the OGs, the man, the myth, the legend, Ed Osborne, gets it done at Daytona. That's Big his Ed. Fir- that's his first win in yep. Bluegrass ever. First Been with win, us which- for six seasons and just got that first win. Yep, and he had, he had the same average lap time as as Fritz. So I know they were the the finish. I know that. Some disputed who actually won, despite what iRacing said. Um, but just awesome to see a guy that's that's been around for a long time that shows up to every race, whether he's the fastest or not the fastest or somewhere in between. He's just he's been around. He's all around good guy. I, I can't imagine there's anybody that's listening that's going to have a, a bad word to say about Ed. It's, it's like when, in NASCAR, when one of those crowd favorites that never wins finally gets their, their yep. first win, it just, just cool as shit, man. And I, I don't know Ed super well, but I just super stoked for him. I, ho- I hope he's still excited off of it. Oh yeah, uh, Michael Robinson actually had the same average lap time as him and Fritz as well. And then if you oh, look, shit, he did. if you look, Dustin Ronsett and Bobby Hall were only a thousandth off, a one one thousandth off of that average yeah, lap time. Barrett, so Barrett, Tyler, and Kyle were all right there as well. Yeah, super close, super close racing. But yeah, at the end, I know that coming to the line, um, there were some pictures that you know they were trying to say Fritz won or whatever. But that's not what we what we go off of. We go off of the iRacing results, and iRacing declared Ed as the winner. And something else that BJ was touching on Wednesday night in the Wednesday night broadcast. Um, so it doesn't go by the yellow line; it goes by the end of the checkered at the fit, like the transponder. The live timing and results stops at the yellow line, but the transponder goes until the end of the checkered. Gotcha. And I didn't know that. So, and that's what BJ said that he he found out uh, from somebody within iRacing that that's how it works. Is it goes from uh, the transponder actually picks it up at the end of the uh, checkers instead of the yellow line. So I always thought it was at the start. Yeah, I thought it was the yellow line, but I guess that makes sense though. If they they have the checker there, you know, the yellow is the start line, the checker yeah. is the finish line. Right. Makes sense. I just never thought about it like that. Yep. And so that's why it was uh, deemed that Ed was the winner, I guess, with through our racing. Uh, Ed led 20 laps. Most laps led that race. He had a really good race, stellar uh, performance by Ed. A couple of uh, incidents happened there during the race that were scary. Looked like that he might not have, he might have got. He barely missed it. You know, he, he came one inch from getting caught up in some stuff there. I know he, his teammate, um, they were pushing them pretty hard there towards the end of the race and, you know, stuff happened, but it was, uh, all in all a good finish at Daytona. Like I said, you know, you had Jonah pushing Scott for the 
win and he he said he wasn't lifting he was wide open trying to get scott to the finish line and help him get the win and uh ultimately turned scott down into ed and um i think if he doesn't turn scott down into ed then scott may have had the momentum to get around ed but uh yep. knocked ed down in the grass and obviously you can, we don't have a finish line down in the grass so things look a little bit different uh, with that picture, but if you were to take a straight line and draw it down, and you got to think also, Ed's splitter was gone in, on iRacing with the visual end. It's not yep. actually gone though. That's the thing is it's still on the truck. It's just not visually right. represented. The code, the code still has the splitter attached um, based on the vehicle di- dimensions in iRacing. So it's even though we visually can't see the splitter, it was still there because if he goes to the garage and gets damage fixed his splitter is going to show back up again. He's just going to have some wrinkles and, and stuff. So that's yeah. the other side of it. People have to keep in mind, but either way, Ed's declared the winner. Congrats to Ed. Big, big, big shout out to him. Hell of a job. Uh, we wanted to have him on the podcast, but unfortunately he has to be up at 4 a.m. every day. Um, so he wasn't able to join us tonight. Um, so it was a good race though. Yeah. Um, another thing I wanted to touch on um, before before I'd like to see what Cody thought about the race, since he actually got the race in it. I almost used our, our one F word right there, but we'll save it for <laughs> better use later. Um, I, I, I heard tale of uh, David Farmer and Brian Terry had some sort of incident. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't see it or anything, but what I do know is that they made amends afterwards, which makes yep. me happy because I know they had something dating back to, to last week as well. And Dave came to race with me in trucks to give me uh, another pusher with, with Team Flex. Mm-hmm. Um, Jason, if you have uh, an overview of what happened there, because I'm kind of curious myself. So um, they were coming across start finish line and um dave had a big big run and he went around somebody on the outside um they kind of all checked up everybody in front of him kind of checked up um and he got into the back of brian i went to instantly went to in car to see if rpms stayed the same or if they went down and you could see rpms drop significantly uh as he was approaching brian and um it just he just didn't let up uh, let up enough so when he hit brian um it shot brian up into the wall and turned him you know um i know that brian was thinking it was intentional as was i at first yeah it's like it's payback for what he did last week you know to to the yeah. farmer in the cup series well then i went to the in car and i was like okay he actually did try to lift so I, it was hard for me to say that it was uh intentional whenever i'm seeing the rpms drop due to the guy lifting um and he wasn't expecting them to check up as much as they did. I guess I, you know, either way, yeah. I didn't think it was intentional. So, um, talked to him about it. He come, you know, right immediately come up and was like, "Hey, man, uh, that wasn't. I wasn't doing that on purpose." He said, "I wasn't trying to wreck him." He's like, "I le- legit was just trying to get it through the pack, and they checked up more than I expected." And uh, he just didn't hit Brian square when he did hit him. So, um, I think if he would, if they would have made, you know, if he'd have hit him square, it probably would have been fine. Yep. As as I like to say, you'll have that on those super speedway jobs. Mm-hmm. Super and then speedways. and later on, Dave had not the same issue as me because we both upgraded our PCs this week with exact same parts. And uh I guess he was in a turn and his wheel just went straight and yeah. ended his <laughs> ended his race. So, so super cool Monday for us. So <laughs> also I, he sent he sent me a replay of that as well and uh, an actual video of what happened. He's yeah. It's when he was in Discord with me. I moved him back down to to flex, and when I moved him from in Discord, it crashed his wheel. And you yep. can see he was trying to turn the wheel, but in in game, it was just nothing. There was no yep. no so, no uh, control. That makes perfect sense because here's what happened. We both uh, we did CPU and motherboard upgrades. Mm-hmm. Um, I like found a, that's really like an good. engine upgrade, basically. Yes, <laughs> and. Um, I found a really good deal on a refurbished Z690 motherboard yep. through Newegg, and uh, we both got pieces of shit. <laughs> mm. And uh, since you said it's when you moved him through Discord, audio and iRacing, we learned like 
the physics are generated via audio and mm-hmm. vice versa. So when you do stuff like that, if your motherboard's not happy, then you get stuff like that that mm-hmm. happened. But we've both rectified the issue, so we'll be full strength this week. <laughs> good to hear. Good but, to hear. Cody, since you were actually in the race, what did you think about it? <laughs> oh, a lot. That's <laughs> I, I'm happy Ed got his first win. Mm-hmm. That's out of everybody in the field. I couldn't think of somebody else that I would want to get a win at Daytona to get themselves mm-hmm. into the playoffs. He deserved it. I'm very happy for Ed. On my part, I I I was a little upset. Let's we finished the stage and I was sitting around the top tens. That's I knew who I needed to finish in front of to try and get myself in on points. Mm-hmm. And then it came down to Mikey had a issue with his wheel as well. Yep. Where his wheel shut off and his just turned him straight right into the wall. And we had our big one. Yep. Yeah. And I got checked up for the initial part of it. And then I was starting to speed back up after everything had settled down to get through the rest of it. And one of my teammates who was caught up in it was coming back onto the track and slid right across. And I couldn't slam on the brakes fast enough. And he sent me into the wall, Mm -hmm. dropped me down on engine power, got what I could fixed, got back out there and, that point it was just rolling around but all in all for a super speedway i think we had a very great race wasn't very too many incidents that happened didn't have much going on during the race i think most of us were just riding around just logging laps yep that is uh unfortunately a part of it which i was about to ask you this but instead of just asking you i guess we could say or announce which I'm, everyone already knows but the 16 playoff drivers in the truck series because i don't know if you're one of them until i read this um so uh starting from first going down the 16th we have jonah colbert <laughs> is how i'm going to pronounce his name because i know he loves it the colbert uh, report. exactly um peyton hubbard my teammate wes wigand myself um, I'm tied with uh, Barrett Morton for fourth. Mm-hmm. Uh, another teammate, Bobby Hall, is sixth. Uh, Dustin Reinstettel, seventh. He's tied with Jeremy Vaughn. Uh, ninth is a four way tie between Sean uh, Kaiser, Kaser, mm-hmm. because I like to say it both ways every time. Uh, <laughs> Lucas Lyons, uh, the man of the hour, Ed Osborne. Um, mm-hmm. Everybody is number one enemy right now. Taylor Peacock. <laughs> <laughs> um, back to 13th from there is Sean Kostritza. Mm-hmm. Um, 14th, Tyler Evans. 15th. Public enemy number two was Tyler Evans. Public enemy number two for sure. I wasn't going to say it because last time I said that, I ended up getting my shit pushed in for several weeks. <laughs> um, P15, another flex driver, Alan Duranco. And P16, Another flex driver, Dan Worthington. So um, we got we got five in there. So that's pretty cool. But I yeah. this is well, I think going to make for some really good playoff racing. All those, the, these are the guys that have been in contention all year. It's, I think we're going to have some good racing. So I'm going to go ahead and cover the regular season final standings. Um, I know mm-hmm. some people are probably going to be questioning that because I didn't actually post those in Discord. I went ahead and posted the playoff six top 16. So Peyton Hubbard comes out as your regular season champion. He didn't race Daytona. He had that secured by uh, via week 13 uh, with uh, a massive points lead. So even with Jonah's points from Daytona, uh, he wasn't able to catch Peyton. He was still 24 points behind. So Jonah was in second. Wes came out as the third overall finisher for the regular season. Bobby Hall was the fourth. Barrett Morton was fifth. Sean Kaiser was sixth. Healy was seventh. Kostritza was eighth. Evans was not. Ryan Settle was 10th. Worthington was 11th. Duranco, 12. Osborne, 13. Lions, 14. Verrill was 15. And Brian Terry was 16. Um, the reason that Verrill and Lucas, or uh, Verrill and Terry, I'm sorry, are out is because we had winners, Jeremy Vaughn and Taylor Peacock, already uh, locked in. So 
Yep. Those those guys unfortunately don't get the race in the playoffs due to uh, those other boys having wins to lock their themselves in. They weren't in the top sixteen in points, but the win uh, supersedes that. So, um, so now what we have is a playoff scenario. Everybody that continues to run for the rest of the playoffs will have a points reset also for a butt kicker. So everybody outside the playoffs is racing for a butt kicker gamer plus unit at this moment. So don't you Cody, don't think that you're, don't think that your season is over. So it's not, you're going to have a, it's a secondary playoff. And what we'll do is they won't be reset within sim racer hub because I can't do two chases in sim racer hub, but I can do uh, an Excel sheet, which we will have. We've already created. Uh, There's an Excel sheet where we will manually import, uh, everyone's points for each race, and then we will total those points up at the end of the of the playoffs. Um, so you'll it, it's a um, it's a straight seven week shootout, and then the top four will be running for the butt kicker at Phoenix. So try to get yourself into those top four um, for the last race, and if you're in the top four for that last race, you'll have the shot for the butt kicker. We're not going to do um cuts like we're not going to you'll be able to run the entire seven weeks um so just keep that in mind and if we have ties for four you know if there's more than four then we'll we'll use well everybody will get a shot to go for it if we have a a eight-way tie or some crap you know uh going into phoenix we'll let all eight of you guys run for the butt kicker so it's the least we can do to show appreciation and and keep you guys around for uh the 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 next seven weeks because we want to we want to keep our car count up, obviously, and we want everyone to be able to enjoy this playoffs um, for something other than the overall championship. And, you know, if you're not familiar with the butt kicker, I mean, it's a, what, a $250, yeah. $300 piece of equipment. Yep. yep. That is and really nice. If, if you've never used one, mine is actually currently, I haven't got it set up on the new stuff, but it adds a, a, an entirely different dimension to eye racing. Um, I only have one. I know some guys run four for like all four corners for tires and everything, but Mm -hmm. it allows you, the the biggest thing for me is it allows you to sense slip so much sooner than just doing it through, through your headset or whatever. Yep. Um, but to build off of that, we're, we do the butt kicker to keep car count up after the championship for the guys that are outside of the championship. For all three series. For all three series, I just had this lightning strike in my brain. Mm -hmm. Um, So everybody that is racing for that butt kicker, Mm -hmm. um, on top of that, I am going to personally, um, if you win that, it's I'm going to pay for every race that you enter from here on out. So it's seventy bucks basically, and I'll do that for all three series. Hell yeah. So I'll I'll put that in Discord because wait you say guys that know again. As well as, so, so how how's that going to work? Say that again. So who whoever wins the butt kicker is also going to get every race from here on out paid, paid for back. by me. Okay, I yeah. see what you're saying. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. So I'll put that in Discord. Um, but the reason being, um, you guys know as well as me, it's it's no fun when you get to the end and you got. I, I know, like I think uh, Cup last season had like eight or 10 cars in the championship and it doesn't put on a well, good show. It was 12. It, it was 12. Yeah. It, it cause it, it's frustrating. It, it's not fun for the guys to broadcast. Nobody wants to watch, you know, 10 cars race for what, 312 laps or whatever it is at Phoenix and cup. It, so I, I hope you guys will, will hang out in there. And, 11. And I just looked, we had 11. Sorry. Gotcha. So I, I hope that entices some people to stick around and, and race for something a little extra too. And, and maybe, maybe we can get somebody else to, maybe we can do something for second and third. Like I said, I just thought of this right now. So uh, more details to come, perhaps we can figure some other stuff out too, to entice guys that are, you know, maybe first, second, third, fourth outside of the playoffs. And, I'd you say, know, go ahead, Cody. Jason and I were talking after Daytona and, and I was telling them I was thinking about taking a few weeks just to kind of clear my head from the bluegrass racing. Cause after Michigan, my racing just kind of went down and just went further and further down. But I took a few days and finally messaged them back. It's like, you know what? 
I am going to race. I'm just going to take it as I'm going to go out, try and win myself a butt kicker. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to try and bank myself some money, try and get some race wins. And you can yep, still win the race money. You, like if you, even if you're not in the playoffs, you can still race the, the higher the, the car count, obviously the more money you can potentially win. So even if you're not racing for the playoffs, you can still go win 80 to a hundred dollars, depending on car count. Like I think farmer won 80 bucks for his win at Daytona. So there's still money yep. that can be won. Um, so that's, what's cool. And guys, you know, they'll, they'll want to, they'll drop out um, of the playoffs cause they don't think they can win the championship. There's more than just a championship still to be won. all kinds of money can still be won, and, and um racing with your team too is is another aspect of that as well helping your teammates out obviously and, in, in a clean manner and we want guys to be able to race through up like so if you if you if there's a track that you want to race up in you, you can race up as many times as you want um and we don't allow drivers to race down during the playoffs um which, you know, maybe that's something that we need to revisit and, and think about letting guys race down so that, you know, if there are several guys that want to race down at a particular track, they can. And that way that'll help also help car count because they're not they're still not able to take money away from the series. That money still goes back into the pot for the championship fund. And maybe instead of putting it towards, towards the championship fund, maybe we put it towards something, um, you know, for the guys that aren't in the championship running. So and yep. and that's an, that's, that's an another idea. thing. So, um, but yeah, you guys can still race up as much as you, as you possibly can do and want, um, to help keep the car count up in in Xfinity and cup. (laughs) So, uh, I guess we need to cover Xfinity for Daytona. Yep. 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 Um, Um, go ahead. Go ahead. James Silvers was ended up, uh, getting the win on that one on Tuesday night. Four. Is it, is it number four? Silvers. Okay. Yep. Uh, Justin Ray, he locked himself into the playoffs um, with the help of, you know, his teammates and such. Um, me personally, and I got also, well, let me do this real quick. Mo Abbott was third. Scroggins was fourth. Michael Robinson was fifth. Radburn was sixth. Twitty was seventh. Lancaster eighth. Hackney nine. Slater 10. All right. So I want to say this real quick. Um, I think that. If I'm J- if I'm James and I know Justin isn't locked in, I'm letting Justin win that race. I mean, that's the teammate thing to do. And yes. at that point, they were trying to get Justin and Tyler both were, were battling each other and they're both teammates, right? So I- I'm sitting here scratching my head like, yeah, great for James and all, but you know, you your teammate needed needed that lock position he needed that to be 100 percent positively sure that he was jason, in. jason's just stirring the pot we need some <laughs> inter- <laughs> drama like it's formula one i'm just saying <laughs> if it's me i'm letting i'm letting my teammate win that race um because justin got in by the skin of his freaking teeth just barely you know yeah um yeah tyler got knocked out because we had todd mays had a win and that knocked tyler out by Two points, man. You know, he was two points behind Jason Ayerson, uh, and 12. Let's see, he ended up being 22 points. Is that right? 20, yeah, 22 points behind Jason, Justin Ray. Uh, Justin Ray tied with Tony Iverson. So if Tyler doesn't get wrecked out and Justin, you know, Tony wins that race, uh, you know, totally yeah. different. You know, maybe Justin and Tyler are battling for the last position. I'm just saying, like, there's so many scenarios that could happen. And if it's me, I'm letting Justin win that race just to be a good teammate. Um, but it is what it is. Yeah, I digress. Which, Back to um, the overall. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I was just going to say, as far as the, the team stuff goes, um, this is my first te- season racing with, like, really well-formed teams that – are cohesive and we go in with a game plan, all those kinds of things. And, um, I, I don't know how important that is to other people. Um, I, I would assume the guys that are on your team, you like, or at least I hope so. Um, <laughs> I, I know that maybe there's a couple out there that maybe there's a, you know, a little rivalry or whatever, but if, mm-hmm. uh, if I, if I'm in a position where I'm locked in 
So, for instance, I didn't get to run Daytona because of hardware problems. I was I was the only guy on my team locked in, and entering, I I knew that Dan and Alan were the most at risk of not making the playoffs. Most vulnerable, right? Uh, specifically, Alan. Um, if I had been able to run that race, there's nothing I wanted more than simply to to push Alan as far as I could. Um, I don't know if everyone has that mindset and, and there are times that it's cost me where I've, I've tried to do stupid things for my teammates. If you remember, uh, Atlanta, uh, I, I went three ride cause I was trying to take the air off the guy in front of me to let my teammate get a lap led three ride. Yes. Three run. Uh, <laughs> That's um, my downfall. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, but yeah, to, to me racing with your team is. 99% as important as racing for myself. And I, I'm guessing that's not the case for everybody and I get it, but I don't, it's, I take just as much joy in seeing my teammates race. Well, yeah. I mean, I, go ahead. we were in the same situation with WJM. I was the only driver who could, could have possibly got in on points. I just needed to have a good finish and hope, the two or three guys that were right in front of me had poor finishes, but Ron, Fernando, and Derek, they all needed a win. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we had the conversation before. If you guys are up front, I will not go for the win. I will push you because you need it. Mm -hmm. If I finish second, that's still a good finish for me. That should give me enough points to get me in. Probably enough. Yeah, probably. Um, Looking at actually Cindy. So, Looking at the results, Mo Abbott, he's only ran seven races this season, but he's had five top fives, and I think five top threes. I think all three, all five of those top fives have been podium finishes. Mo, if Mo runs the whole season and doesn't miss any more races than what he did, I, he's had a, I mean, just theoretically speaking here, obviously, because we, he, you know, there's several more races in there that he ha- would have had to have ran, but if the guy does race those races and finishes well, I mean, I don't know if anybody's beaten him this season just based on the podium finishes that he has. Um, he may not have that many wins, but that's consistent as hell, dude. Five five podiums like that. Five top yep. fives. That uh there's there's a real life parallel which it hasn't played out exactly how I thought it would. Um mm. so Mo Mo ran cup full-time last season Mm -hmm. um in real life cole custer has been a cup driver for a long time and i would and i'm not saying this about mo um but cole custer has been a very mediocre cup driver at best Mm -hmm. but when that guy runs xfinity he in in years past because i think he has an xfinity championship he kills an xfinity and i think with mo he's found himself in that correct level to where he's competitive everywhere in the Xfinity series and not as a slight, not saying he doesn't compete in cup. Cause he was also very good in cup. He, he hadn't won a championship or anything, but he, he was a, a talented driver up there as well. So mm-hmm. when you have someone that gets the drop down, this is the kind of thing that you can see where they're just good finish after good finish after good finish. Hmm. I mean, even with Kyle Bush, I mean, you see him go run yeah. the truck. <laughs> yeah, that's taking it to the extreme. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's one of the best cup drivers of all time. Going, yes, racing he, trucks. <laughs> he is doing very good. But even with the fact that he's constantly running that cup car, and even when they switched over this next gen, and they had no idea what it was going to do, he mm-hmm. was still going down and racing trucks and getting wins down there, and then coming back to the next gen and getting wins in the next gen, pretty much on the same weekend. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, that's just, I know, which he's more well liked now, I think, mostly because he doesn't drive one of them cheating yoders, but um, <laughs> yep. he's, he's, and he's the best wheel man in NASCAR in, in recent memory. Kyle Larson might get there, but he's, he's got about 40 more wins and another yeah. championship before we're talking about them in the same breath. But yeah. Kyle, um, but based on, my, based on what Kyle's life, done already, he, yeah. I think he's the best wheel man that we've seen in a long time. Uh, I know he yeah. needs a pad of stats, but 
without padding the stats with just looking at it, I think he's badass. So and which it depends on which stats you're talking about padding because the dude's won over 200 races in the top three series, which no nobody's nobody across the top three series has done what he's done and. You know my thoughts on Richard Petty with this with this stuff, so I'm not going to bring him into it. But uh, yeah, you right. know, Kyle, <laughs> Kyle's one of the best to ever do it. Period. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, uh, little little bit of words. So looking back at Xfinity, um, we'll go ahead and run down the points for the uh, regular season standings. All right. So James Silvers came out the regular season champion uh, over Radburn. 12 points above his teammate, Radburn. Uh, Lancaster was third in regular season points. Jim Ott was fourth. Kyle Mays was fifth. Michael Robinson was sixth. Keith Hackney, seventh. Blake Kinsley was eighth. Alex Penn, ninth. Slater, Jordan Slater, tenth. Scott Fritz, 11. Sean Christensen, 12. Tony Iverson, 13. Justin Ray tied with Tony for 13th. Jason Harrison, 15th. And then Tyler Evans would have been 16th. Um, but Todd Mays, like I said, takes that overall 16th yep. spot for the playoffs which that is not the playoff bracket just so we're that's just clear. the regular season standings finish yep. correct yep. yep did you want to run through the playoff the bracket playoff yeah yeah playoff bracket uh silvers lancaster hackney shutters hensley ott michael robinson mays airson todd mays alex penn jordan slater scott fritz tony iverson sean Kostritza, justin ray that's your top 16 rounding out which I heard just so we get focused on it, so I don't get a message. You did say Keith Hackney's name twice, so Keith, mm-hmm. you were mentioned on the podcast. Oh yeah, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he finished we'll third, and we'll say it another time. He's third in the uh, standings with his wins uh, for the playoff going into the first round. So he's only two points out from Rad or from Lancaster. Silvers has a pretty uh, sizable. Points difference with 2,035 points. So he's 17 points ahead of Lancaster going into round one at Darlington. So we need cars um, to help these guys, you know, bigger the car count, the more these guys can separate themselves or make up points and shit like that. So if um, you guys want to race up, you're more than welcome. Like I said, come race up from the trucks to, and, and that way help these guys. And same thing with Xfinity. You guys are racing for the butt kicker. Um, so don't, don't stop showing up, keep showing up and all your points will reset. Like I said, and, uh, we'll let you try to run for that butt kicker and, uh, potentially also run for some race money and we'll get those winnings, um, for the rest of the season as well. Still, still plenty of time left to, to change the season around seven weeks, long time still. Um, I just, need to, I just want to say, I shit you not. As soon as I said that about Keith, hmm. I got a message from him about some paints <laughs> that he's done to share on Facebook. So his ears were buzzing. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right. I guess we need to move on over to the cup real quick for Daytona. Cover that. Uh, um, I'll let you lead serious. with this one because it's your homeboy. Um, oh, we, we had the birth of a legend, a new name. Daytona Dave, Dave Tona Farmer, whatever you want to call him. Uh, like Ed, he's he's been here. I think this is third full time season. He yep. ran a little bit before that. Yep. Uh, gets his first uh, first win of all places out of Super Speedway. Um, I know we've talked about it a bunch before. He probably should have won Watkins Glen last season. In he had a season. chance to win Watkins Glen this season as well. He's he's been fast a lot of places and that finally be able to get it done um i i was a lap down i got uh wrecked by uh a name that i shall not mention currently so i don't get off Mm -hmm. on a tangent but i was able to get back out there i was a lap down and try to get in the draft with him and and position and stuff like that um i wasn't right up there on him um, but i had a front row seat to the finish and um i have to commend i think Mike Peters, because I Mm -hmm. thought for sure that Mike was going to pull out and they were going to have a drag race to the finish there. Um, As we exited turn four, as soon as as soon as we hit the straightaway, Dave said, I won the fucking race. I won the race. And I was like, dude, you have (laughs) you have a whole straightaway to go. 
And if these guys start pulling out, you're going to like, we're going to have to talk about this, but Mike, <laughs> Mike stayed tucked right up to him, which I did hear in, in the post-race interview. Mike said that Dave had, had worked well with him earlier in the race. So yep. he, he kind of returned the favor there and secured good finishes for both of them, which is probably the smart thing to do. Yeah, I'm not 100%. saying that, yeah. not saying that, Everybody would do that, and I wouldn't expect. No, everybody, everybody to wouldn't do that. do that. When that's the thing, that's that shows you um, how far Peters has came along this season. His racecraft has grown. Um, he's, you know, instead of taking the risk and wrecking every, the whole field, he let it come down to he was going to help push Dave. And you know, I commend Mike Peters a lot for that. I've seen this guy grow a whole different side of him this last half of the season. Um, so I, I really like the guy a lot, and he's grown a tremendous amount as far as a sim racer uh, on that side and with his race craft and everything. So big, big shout out to him for pushing Dave to the win. I, I want to say that between Dave and Ed, I don't know whose interview was uh, more. What's the word? Who, who showed more emotion? Like they were both like Ed was like, I'm so emotional and right I don't know what to say. And Farmer, yeah. you, he was so emotional, he didn't know what to say. Yeah, it was he, incredible to listen to. He had no idea. <laughs> He's like, uh, I just got up there. I didn't even thank uh, Flex because all all my Flex guys came up and and raced with us and and. We're, we're in the draft with him and he's like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I didn't even say anything, blah, blah, blah. But just between both of those guys, they've both been here a long time. It's another, I won't say fan favorite for Dave because I know he's got a lot of people that don't like him or whatever. Yeah, but, but still, it's it's good to hear the emotion and that's something that they've strived for and they've worked towards for years now and it happened, you know, whether, whether it be super speedway or whatever they, you know, you can't take it away. A win's a win, man. And it's amazing for both of them. And that's what makes it so awesome. And that's what we're doing here. That's what, we, you know, we want to see and we want to have is we want those guys to be so ecstatic when they win and show that kind of emotion. Yep. That's and, what uh, we're selling, man, is that experience <laughs> like that. It's something you'll never get. Those dopamines, that rush of adrenaline and all that. Oh, it's unbelievable. You can't you can't do it anywhere besides what we're doing here. Yep. Can't replicate I do it anywhere wanna, else. I do want to give some uh some insider info towards the end of that race. Absolutely. Um Matt Grenier probably saved Dave from screwing his whole night up. Um, up. so like I said, I was a lap down, but I don't know with I'd I'd say 15 laps to go or so. Mm -hmm. Um I I was on Dave's bumper and his wish was my command as like whatever you're going to do, uh we're going to go and we're going to do this. And for three laps in a row he's like all right, I'm I'm going middle. I'm going I'm going to go to the middle and and we're going to go. I was like all right, dude. And every time he'd say it, Matt was like cuz Matt was a part of this as well. And Matt's like, I'm, I don't think that's a good idea. I'm not going to go with you. So we, we ended up never doing that. And if we had, we probably would have had one of those stereotypical, you know, four cautions at the end and a green white checker and all that horse shit. And, mm -hmm. and Dave's coming home on a trailer. So special shout out to, to Matt and his, as his um, trademark level, -headed level shit. headedness. Yep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's uh, segue for just a moment. All right. So back to it. We're going to talk about the regular season uh, final standings. Brandon Holder ended up edging out John Schwartz for the regular season championship title. Uh, so congrats to Brandon Holder. He ended up winning that by one point. That's how tight that was for that race. Uh, Schwartz come in P2. GT Hawkins was third. Nick Mills was fourth. Alex Huffman was fifth. Jonathan Atkins was sixth. Mikey Neal was seventh. Matt Grenier was eighth. James Silvers was ninth. Then we have a tie for tenth between David Farmer and Keith Hackney. Congrats to both of those guys. Brandon Robertson brings us up for twelfth. Thirteenth is Sean Castrizza. Fourteenth is Jason Bridges. And fifteenth was Travis Twitty. And sixteenth was Alex Healy. Now. Go on to the playoff standings. The, who made actually made it in, Cody? Uh, your first person that was in was Schwartz. Uh, he beat out Brandon Holder for the playoff positions. 
he's ahead by one point there. And then in third, you got GT. He's two points behind Schwartz. So your top three, actually pretty much your top seven. I are only, holy shit. <laughs> only split by six points yep. in the top seven. So go ahead and but who's in GT, the third and fourth? GT's in third. You got Hackney in fourth. There, we said his name again. Uh, Atkins and Huffman are tied for fifth. Then you got Mikey Neal is in seventh. Mills, who pointed his way in, just don't know how, but he just always gets there at the end. May not be for a win, but he's there. And then Farmer is in a three-way tie for ninth with Mike Peters and Justin Winters. And then you got Grenier, Silvers, Brandon Robertson, and then Bridges and Kostritza are tied for 15th as the last two drivers in. All right. And the reason that Bridges and Kostritza both are in is one, Kinder did not, uh, is not going to be able to race for the rest of the season because he's doing real world racing, you know, uh, with the Carolina wing carts with his little buddy, his little boy Gabe, his little driver, he, uh, Gabe uh, Yacono or y- Yacono, one of the two. It's Y A C O N O. He will be a Cup Series driver one day. Mark my words right now. He will be in NASCAR. Uh, That kid is amazing. And with John as his mentor and uh, what they're doing right now in the Carolina Wing Kart Series, uh, they're they're, they're racing with Braxton Bush week in and week out. Okay. That's their number one competition is is Braxton Bush. And they're, as of right now, they're kicking Braxton Bush's ass. So that's a... that's a feat in itself. So Gabe, uh, like I said, I don't know if it's Yakano or Yakano or how you say it exactly, but Y A C O N O that kid's going to be, uh, in NASCAR and wait and see. Um, Rocky Boyd is the other person that <laughs> has vacated their playoff position. And I'm going to go ahead and talk about this for just a second. And then I'm going to hand it over to Alex. So Rocky calls two cautions. Um, they were net code related. I will say that. And I asked him to park his cart at Daytona, um, because he had two incidents where he went three wide, stuck it in the middle. And both times he right reared, whoever he was on his left-hand side, it, the, the net code was so bad. He had a halo of net code around him. And unfortunately it, it took Rocky out. And I want to say that it on one hand, obviously I think that it's a good thing on the other hand. I hate to lose a guy that is talented as he is. He's just immature as hell. He has a lot of growing up to do. And instead of just taking it and saying, okay, I'm still in the playoffs, whatever. And, and parking the car, like I asked him to, I had to remove him from the session. Then he comes into my channel because I wasn't in a lock channel and he starts going off and bitching. So I moved channels and then he started p- typing into uh, post-race fights and about, I want my money back for this race and my and next race. Well, first of all, you don't get your money back for this race because this race has already started and and you broke, you know, you're kicked out based on cause of two wrecks. Secondly, um, then after that, I, I, I just went ahead and banned him from the discord. Cause I, I was trying to do race control. Didn't want to bother. Then he messages me and threatens me with a Facebook post. Oh, if, Instead of just sending me ten dollars, uh, you're going to ban me from the server. I guess I'll make up a Facebook post. Do make up a face. Write a post all you want. Dude. We've had posts written about us fucking a hundred times. I don't give a shit. There right? it is. That's the one. I don't care. No, you already said it. <laughs> I think I said it, but that's you already said it. <laughs> but anyways, like the whole point of it is that you're locked in the playoffs. All you had to do was come come in next week, run well at Darlington, move on. And you're fine. But guess what? You want to be a punk. You want to be a smart ass. You want to threaten to go to Facebook. Okay. So now you're out of the playoffs. Now you're done. I sent you your $10 and you're done. The league you're out. You, you, you're, you said this league was shit in your little comment on uh, in the d- post race fights, which is why I kicked you out. Cause I'm not, you're not going to sit here and, and degrade the league cause you're mad and cause you're having issues. Uh, and, and every time you touch three, go three wide, you're touching somebody with net code and wrecking them. I mean, both times you went three wide, a wreck occurred. Think about that. Just think about that for a second. That's the problem. All right, Alex, your turn. <laughs> I don't know if I can follow that. And I was <laughs> I was a victim of one of these incidents. But anyways, I'll do my best. Um, which I I broke. This was the first time this entire season between two series. I broke my golden rule, which is 
Never key up unless you're calling out your pits because on his first incident, which it was on lap 32 of a 100 lap race and were three wide for 15th because he shoved it in there and it ended up and I, I broke a toe link. I was in the pits for eight and a half minutes or whatever it is. And I keyed up and I was like, glad we went three wide. 32 laps into the fucking race. There's yep. our third F word. And yeah, right. even, right. even, even after the race of all people, Huffy was like, Oh my God. When I heard Healy key up, I knew that he was pissed. Cause he never says anything. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly so, what I said. I was like, Oh, <laughs> you never key. So up? I, I, that that's my golden rule. Um, but I'm, I'm sitting in the, in the pit box getting repaired and gr- on top of that, I didn't get to run the truck race because of hardware issues that I got solved between Monday and Wednesday. So I was really focused on the on the cup race this week, and mm-hmm. I, I thought we had a good strategy and all that. Um, so I'm sitting in the pits, and um, the flex team came up and raced with us, and Rocky takes Dan Worthington out. Um, I can't remember if he hit Dan first or he ricocheted whatever it took Dan out of the race and we're all pissed off about it. And I'm still sitting in there getting my stuff fixed. Um, I see Rocky pull in and he goes to the pit and I, I heard you say that he is parked. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there and I see him pull out of the box and I still have optional. I go, because if you hadn't kicked him from the server, I was going to make it everybody's problem. I, it, whether it was under yellow, green, white, black, I was taking that guy out because I can't <laughs> say the F word anymore. Um, I was going to, I was going to assassinate that dude on live TV, <laughs> um, which I know it was a, a net code kind of deal. Um, but with that being said, at the points in the race and where he was in the pack going three wide, it's just why? Why are you doing this? You're, you know, you're not racing for like stage points. We're like, we got a long ways to go. This is a cup race. This, this is an endurance race. This is not a sprint. Yep. And it, the, the, the maddest I've been this entire season, obviously because I keyed up finally. Mm-hmm. But I just, oh, buddy, I was, I would have drove to his house and kicked his dog. <laughs> yeah and it's unfortunate because like i said the dude was he's a talented driver he's just too aggressive he's at fast. times he's, he's too aggressive he's fast, no doubt yeah he's fast and and it's un, like i said it's unfortunate to lose somebody that's as fast as him and i hate that he's he's mad about it whatever uh but if he would have waited okay i told him i sent him a message and i said i'll talk to you after the race i'm busy after he sent me the thing about he's going to send a do a top of a Facebook post. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought better of it. You know what? There's no point in even talking to this guy. He's, he's too young to be here in my opinion at this point. Like he, he's too immature. Um, he's got a lot of growing up to do and he just pissed away a good chance, opportunity, a really good chance to have to be in a league, um, that we know is got really good talent in it. And, for him to be like, oh, this league is shit. Well, that's your opinion right now because you're mad and you want to try to try to bring us down. But at the end of the day, I just decided, you know what? It's better for everyone if uh, I just send him his ten dollars and let him be done because because he's he yep. wasn't bringing anything to the table. He, you know, the, he had already said uh, the other day that he didn't care. He was just here because he, he was already he, locked uh, in. He's already locked in. All the other races didn't matter, but. He was out of the playoffs now, so yeah. He, yeah, he, but, he screwed himself out of a thousand dollars and you know a chance possibly, to go yeah. possibly win a thousand dollars and and potentially go uh, down to Millbridge and race in a real cart. So I mean that's his fault, his loss. I mean, you know, the, at the end of the day, you NASCAR is not going to let you're not going to talk to NASCAR like that. You're not going to um, threaten NASCAR and not get anything come of it. So sorry, not sorry, but. If and I'm almost certain he's not listening, but Rocky, no. if for if, if for some reason Rocky, if you're out there listening, if you will come and talk to me, I will go barter with Jason if we have a a positive conversation about your maturity and racecraft and stuff like that. 
I will go have the conversation with Jason about you coming back. But I'm sure he's not listening. But if you are, send me a message. We'll talk about it. And of all people, I shouldn't be the guy going to bat for you. But <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give you a chance. If, if you're listening, I'll hear you out. And we can iron it out like men. That's how... Most of these things end positively if you actually talk to someone, but I'm probably wasting precious oxygen right now. <laughs> yep. Probably. So yeah, because I'm I'm at this point I've been cordial with the dude. I've been lenient with the dude. Uh, I'm done. Like there's there's nothing else. When you start threatening me, I'm done. Like don't threaten me, bro. I'm not the one. Seriously. I just don't do that shit. You know, don't be trying to be a keyboard warrior and say, oh, you're going to type a Facebook post. I don't give two fine fucks. Man, you we know how are many people way over the F word <laughs> limit now. <laughs> what, five now? You know how many people yeah. have threatened that or die already done it? Like, it don't mean shit, man. Come on. Grow up. Grow up, grow out. But that cover, or do we, did we already do cut points? Am I crazy? We yeah, did. we did. Okay. Uh, yeah, we did. That was the first two things we did. I was, I was making um, sure. All right. So that'll so, bring us over to topic two. You go ahead. Um. Well, uh, topic one. Other or wait, no, we're talking Radburn. Yeah. Yeah. Radburn. Topic two. Well. Yeah. Okay, I was looking at another topic too. See, you guys, Bluegrass we actually do. We do. We do organize this stuff a little bit. It might not seem like it, but we do apply a little effort here. Um, Very minimal. Just, just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So Radburn has not had a win all season, as opposed to last season. He was stacked with wins, had a really good season. So the question is, will Radburn get a win in the playoffs or continue to miss out? What do you guys think? Cody, you want to take this one? Alex, you want to take it? Who wants to take it? I'll take it. But with me doing the race control stuff with you and watching every race, mm -hmm. Radburn is always right there in the top three right at the end of the race mm -hmm. and it's either he may have pitted too soon and or burned up his tires but he seems like the last five laps he just kind of falls on his face now with radburn he's got the talent that's obviously last season he had a handful of wins mm -hmm. i do think come the playoffs i do expect him to get hopefully two wins at least mm -hmm. that's hopefully his luck turns around and he gets them. I think he'll do it, but time will tell. If if you hang out in the top five sooner or later, you're going to be top one. That That's kind of how I look at it, which I think is, is what you were getting at. That was kind of how my season went this, this year, or I say this year, this season, but if you run up front long enough, you're going to have a race where the cards fall in your favor. And and I agree. I, I, I can't imagine we get to the end of the season and Radburn has zero wins. Mm -hmm. uh, may, maybe not a championship. You never know how it goes, but he's going to win a race. He's just, he just has to just probability. The guy has to win a race. <laughs> you would think so. I mean, it I would like to see him pull something off, but you never know, man. You never know. So far, he's been the opposite of the closer. He's been the opener. Yeah. So yes. let's see. Let's see. Let's see if he can headline. All right. So, um, that's going to bring us over to our next topic, which is playoffs. Obviously, are starting for all three series. Um, we've talked about it a little bit throughout the show already, but I think um, you know. It's going to be an interesting week at Darlington. We, I guess, we should go ahead and talk about Darlington and uh, what we're going to see. Yes. And I mean, I don't know who I th who really to look at for Darlington. It's a tough track. It's a you have to race the track type of situation. You're not racing everyone around you. You're just racing the track. Um, it's not easy to pass there. I don't know who's going to be able to pull it off um, out of the playoff guys that are there, that are there. Or if it'll be somebody from under the top 16. Um, there's still a lot of good talent left that are outside the top 16 in trucks. Uh, let's take a look at that. Let's get standings. I mean, 
any of these guys have the potential to come in and, and pull and still win, you know, that are still not there, still not locked in. Cody being one of them, obviously. Yeah. Um, for me, Darlington, like you said, it's, it's a very tough track. I do not particularly enjoy it. I know it's, Seems like one of the staples for bluegrass for a opening round of the playoffs to to really test the metal of the of the playoff guys. They, I I know there there are guys that love it and they've they probably just ran it more than me mm-hmm. and, and and a lot of us there there's a lot of us that don't like it. I understand why it's there. It, it's it's a good playoff track to have, um, where obviously skill is the biggest part but you are going to have it i'm not saying it races like a super speedway but you're definitely going to have some guys that do not finish the race in the manner of a of a super speedway where something happens and their night is over with that that kind of thing yeah so it i don't want to say it's a wild card necessarily but i wouldn't be surprised to see real fast guys that are racing hard up front that mm-hmm. go home on the, on the trailer, you know? So do you want to, should we go ahead and do our picks for Darlington and trucks and Xfinity and cup at this point? I mean, while we're here, while we're talking about it, it's, you know, we're already on yeah, the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. So we'll start with trucks. As well. we'll, we'll do the picks now. And, um, I think it's going to be they're all about qualifying. In my opinion, whoever comes out on top, I'm going to go with uh, Peyton Hubbard on for this one. Cause I think Peyton's going to qualify really well. And I think it'll that be is, based on qualifying. Uh, I've got, I've got my main man, the double W's Wes Wigand. He's uh, kind of been in that position that Radburn's been in. He's ran all season, not got a win, but He's really good top finishes. 10, top fives. I mean, he's been super consistent. Mm-hmm. And I think this is a track that kind of fits his style and his temperament, that kind of thing. He can get aggressive when he needs to be, and he can be patient when he needs to be. Uh, so, yeah, I'm rolling with Wes big time. Hell yeah. Cody? Oh. <laughs> that, that, that's, I've raced with all of these guys for 14 weeks now, but. Mm-hmm. Dar- Darlington's just a different style track. Mm-hmm. It certainly think, is. A different animal, that's <laughs> I, for sure. I think I'm going to have to go with the guy who has been pretty dominant here of late. I think I'm going to have to go with Jonah. Mm-hmm. I, I think Very he's going to get himself a good qualifying, and I think he's just going to try and run away from everybody. Yeah, I think it's going to come down to qualifying, and I think the guy that is able to, to set himself apart um, on qualifying, whether depending on what happens after that, I don't know. But, you know, I think it's I, definitely track position is important. I have a – what what you just said there, I don't think qualifying is the most important. I think that your – strategy strategy and skill on pit lane getting on and off fast and clean mm-hmm. and making the right call with tires and, and fuel and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think that's the most important thing at Darlington. Yeah. I mean, I, I that goes hand in hand with it. Absolutely. But I'm just saying track position is going to be key yep. early. That's your first thing is you want to worry about is track position. And then, after you get that secured, you want to make sure you're doing really well on and off pit road and everything. Um, Cause this is 138 laps and there's only four sets of tires stage break comes yep. at lap 45. So tough race ahead for the truck guys. Uh, moving on to the Xfinity series. Uh, these guys are also at Darlington this week um, as well as the cup series. So we're doing 158 laps at Darlington in the Xfinity series. They have five sets of tires. Stage break is at 60. Um, what are we looking at? On the Xfinity side, what do you guys think? Who's going to come out there? Do you think Radburn is going to get it done, or do you think it's going to be Silvers or um, potentially Lancaster? Lancaster is good at, at Darlington. Um, Jim Ott seems like to be a fast guy. Keith Hackney, you know, he's always good at the tough tracks like this. Blake Hensley showing speed with all of his uh, momentum right now going into the playoffs, two back to back wins and such. So, what do you guys think? You want to go first, Alex? I do, because it's time. <laughs> it's time to throw up our M's 
for Michael Robinson. It's time, baby. I'm going to call it right this time. He's going to get a win when I say he's going to get a win, and Michael's going to do it. So you think Michael's going to get in locked in to the second round at Darlington? Absolutely. Absolutely. I I feel it in my plums. <laughs> so, uh, Cody, go ahead. I'll go last this time. Um, I think Lancaster is going to do it. it. It's been quite a while since he's had a win mm-hmm. for the season. I, I think he's going to come into the playoffs and he's going to show why he's in the playoffs. I think he's going to come out on top at Darlington. Well, I'm going to say that it's going to be my old time dirt buddy, uh, Scott Fritz, he's going to come out and uh, lock himself into the next round with a win at Darlington. Um, Fritz it is fits his fits his driving style, and he's really good there. He has yep. the potential to uh, to get the win if if he can keep his car clean and if he can um, you know start in a decent position. I think he'll get it, he'll get the win. Keep it and, car, I like right off the car. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's another thing is like Darlington is very tough. Like I said, you got to race the track and not the guys around you. Um, so I hope a lot of these guys are practicing and getting their speed up. And uh, that's all you can ask for, you know, is telling for them to practice and get it done. Um, cup series. Let's see. Who is going to, this is such a tough, these, there's so many guys in the cup series that are equal levels of talent that it's going to be hard to pick who gets the Darlington win. I I think legitimately anybody in the top 12, I I wouldn't think any of those were stupid picks. (laughs) Every single one of them has, has a a case to make here. I'm going to go ahead and, and say, Jonathan Adkins is going to pull out the win at Darlington. Yeah. He's another dirt guy and uh, comes from Hotel and that group of guys. So, and he has been running really well uh, the latter part of the season. He's found his groove. He's fitting right in with these bluegrass guys. And I think that he's doing a fantastic job. So, you know, I think Jonathan will get it done. Between you two. Well, Alex, go ahead. All right, I've I've got my pick. I'm gonna pick the man, uh, Hendrick Motorsports biggest fan, the guy that can't <laughs> can't stand can't enjoy a NASCAR race when he watches it. He'll only post bad things about it and how much NASCAR sucks. But I think Darlington fits Alex Huffman. I think he can do it. I. He's another one of those guys, kind of why I picked Wes. He's very level, very consistent over the whole season. And I think this is a, a track that requires a lot of patience. And hopefully you have more patience than he has for Chase Elliott to come back because uh, Huffy's going to have more wins this season than Chase Elliott. <laughs> <laughs> Good pick. Solid pick. Cody? Um, I think I'm going to have to go with the guy who's kind of had the momentum these past few weeks, Mikey Neal, I, I coming into the playoffs, he's he's going to carry that momentum. Got to make sure so. that hardware lets him complete the race. Hopefully, that's a good pick. <laughs> Mikey's Mikey's always solid. Um, he's been with us for two seasons, and he's he's really solid. So that's a good pick. I feel like. All right, that's that's picks. So we, right. we got we got that knocked out already. Um, let's see. This is something we got to touch on. It's gonna brighten the hearts and minds and eyes of at least a couple people. One who I just mentioned, but playoff banners they have been uploaded since the podcast began recording. If mm-hmm. if you are a playoff driver, get the banner on your car and or truck my god do it not not just for other drivers do it for yourself based on how other drivers are going to treat you and mostly do it for the broadcast so the shit looks right for our dozens and dozens and dozens of fans so all this stuff makes sense i don't want to see a not a, a playoff guy that's up there with a, a bluegrass banner and everyone's all confused and the 
the commentators have to explain, you know, uh, well, they, I guess they didn't get it. Just, just do it. It takes 15 seconds. If you don't know how, or if you have trouble trading paints, I understand that's not everybody's deal. Um, just send me a message, send Jason a message. Probably, you could probably send Cody a message. And I think all three of us would be more than glad to help you out with it. Oh, 100%. It's super easy to do. All you have to go and, and do is go into Trading Paints, and there's an option to add a decal layer, and that's how it's meant to be uploaded. It's not meant to be uploaded to your paint beforehand or anything like that. It's just meant to be uploaded as a decal layer. It's a super easy and efficient way to have it done. Uh, you're not supposed to edit these. They're meant to be put on Eat. as 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 they come. And again. <laughs> so if you have any questions and you need help, Make sure you send us a message uh, and we'll help you upload them to your trading paints. Indeedly do. Um, moving on from that, in my best Flanders voice, um, let's talk about the old uh, fantasy league. Uh, we had a pretty wild one today, and your boy sitting front and center there, Mr. Cody Anderson, I think he had the best day today uh, with a, a touch over 200 points. He's I think you're probably sitting in the top three overall now, yeah? Yeah, I think that should move me up into the top three. Let's uh, Let me uh, pull up some results here real quick. Hopefully it's updated because it wouldn't give me the, uh, the full updated. season. Excellent. That's what I like to see. All right. So, um, if, <laughs> so number one is a guy that works with me. Um, if you go to the Fantasy League channel on Discord, you'll see a picture of this insane, chaotic human being <laughs> who's been watching NASCAR for roughly 14 months and has totally ate up with it. Um, my buddy Colin that I work with, he's sitting P1. First guy to clear 1,000 points. Uh, Tony Iverson also had a – I think he had the second best day today behind you. Um, he's sitting second. Cody sitting third. Uh, Mr. Farmer is sitting fourth. Um, I'm Tony Hawk, as well as Brandon Robertson. We both landed on the 900 today. Um, Jason sitting P7. Uh, the Piss Isle, Dustin Reinstedel, is P8. Uh, Scoot Fruits, Scott, is uh, sitting P9. Brandon Holder, P10. The Weapon, Tyler Evans, P11. Uh, Dookie Shoes, my brother-in-law. You guys see my hot wife sometimes. That's her brother. Uh, he's sitting P12. He uh, runs short track shit in real life. He's He's been doing this stuff his whole life. Um, dirty old man. Brian that Terry. is Brian Terry. Brian Terry, yes. Uh, he's sitting P13. Ron, uh, Ron Morris Racing, sitting P14. Uh, GT Hawkins, P15, which I know he signed up a couple weeks into it, so he's got a little ground to make up. And my new favorite name in the league, Mills Insurance and Barbecue. You can go give Nick Mills a call, and he'll sign you up for some insurance and maybe sell you some barbecue, because that's <laughs> fucking amazing. <laughs> uh, I, love it. I love it so much. But uh, it... If you're listening and, and you still haven't joined, it's just uh, an added dimension to, to watching the races on Sunday. You got something to root for when your guy gets taken out, whatever. And it's good. Me and Jason are shooting each other messages during the race. Like, uh, who, who's in the garage? What you got going? Yeah. It's, it's, it's just a, a, an extra cool thing. Um, also, adding on to after that, we have the website we're currently working on. Um, bluegrassiracing.com. It's... Uh, Work in progress. Under it should be. It's under construction. It should be up and running soon, I hope. But we want you guys to send us your pictures and content. You can do that via Discord, and we can just download it or save it and then upload it to the website because we want to make sure that uh, we have all kinds of content on there for you guys. Um, but we're, we're working on that. I'm wanting to get that done before next season starts, 100%. We've got a few weeks to get that done. Um, so I want to try to knock that out as quick as possible. Um, so we're working on that, trying to get that done for you guys and we'll have everything there to be able to sign up for season seven, um, and schedule. I've got to get that. I need to hurry up and get that knocked out so that I can get that over to the website and get that uploaded and get everything ready. So I've got a lot of stuff on my plate that I've got to do. Um, so hopefully we can get that done and get the website ready for you guys in, in the coming weeks. Um, we went ahead and purchased a wix.com membership to get that up and going so hopefully that'll and work out 
way more complicated than it used to be, but we're going to figure it out. We're going to build you guys a great website where you can stream every race there. You can see the schedule. You can see live points. You can see our sponsors and go to sponsor pages, um, images, all all that good stuff. Adding we're merch. Number one thing, adding, we're adding merch. Adding merch. Um, Found out that that's yeah. super easy to do. Um, you can actually... I didn't know this, but we can add a Shopify with to the Wix. We can add a Shopify platform there. Uh, upload certain images. So if you guys want it, uh, want something made like a T-shirt, you need to send us your image. That way, I can upload it into that, and we can sell you your own shirt with your own. It'll have bluegrass on the front, and then we can put you know your truck on the back or something. So I want I want a uh, a COVID mask, but it's Cody's beard. Yeah, I think that'd be pretty good. I think that'd sell. Yeah, I think so. And then, like, I've already got the clear the calm design made from a while back. We're going to upload that. <laughs> oh um, God, yeah, that has I to mean, be. gotta go. I'm going to get that shirt gotta be on, on there every time I'm streaming. So, um, yeah, I guess I mean the main thing about that is like if you know if you, if there's anything you can think of, or if you're if you're familiar with um, building websites and you want to you know, come over and talk to us and contribute a little bit. Let us know. Um, because yeah, like Alex said, it's not nearly as easy as I thought it was going to be. Um, so we're I still trying to figure that out. Living. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and I, I, I just thought there was going to be some kind of like tutorial that would show me what to do on it. But man, was I freaking wrong? Unless I, unless somebody has already done it and I missed it. So I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. I am sure of that. And the last thing in this row, um, speaking of sending us pictures and stuff, um, as I mentioned earlier, Keith sent me some pictures uh, while the podcast has been happening. This is Darlington week. This is throwback week. If you guys are going to run a cool throwback, send them to me as quickly as possible. I'll get them up on social so you can share it around, all that good stuff. But uh, it's it's Darlington, so get your – just – do your throwback shit. Mm-hmm. Get it in. Exactly. And Get if, those you paints send, up. if you if you send me a good wrench, Dale Earnhardt, I'm gonna beat you with a monkey wrench. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I'm doing for my truck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And does that bring us to the end? Yeah, that's it. Because uh, yeah, yeah, we already did picks. NASCAR race. We oh. we can talk about NASCAR. I'd Gone be happy one to. in Atlanta. He there, sure we did. About it. <laughs> <laughs> we we did talk about it. I will I will say this because, uh, like I said, there are certain people that don't like watching NASCAR races. Apparently, <laughs> um, the the first two stages at, at Atlanta today were pretty boring, but that last stage was mm. probably the best hour of racing that I've watched in several several months if if not maybe a calendar year it it was fantastic from start to finish they were they were too wide guys changing lines left and right like making eye racing moves as as i like to say sometimes and yeah some some great strategy um i was rooting for brad kozlowski there at the end because he hasn't won in like 68 races or something and he Mm -hmm. ended up finishing p2 and what helped which I had him in my fantasy lineup. I also had Joe Logano, which I think Cody had at least one of those guys, maybe both of them. And uh, yeah, the that, like I said, adds an element to it. But I know that the Super Speedway Atlanta is a work in progress. And early on, you get that uh, a lot of single file stuff like you do at... At every super speedway, I I was actually at Atlanta last year for their first race at this version of the track, mm-hmm. and last year was not as exciting as this year. So I think as they figure the package out and figure the setups out and and the tire wear and what they can do, and it's it's just getting better and better. Mm-hmm. Um, people that I've mentioned on this podcast, maybe don't want to give the track a chance, but I need people to remember that auto club didn't put on good races for a decade. And now you guys would suck wieners to have it on the (laughs) schedule next season. And it's not going to be there because we bitched about it for a decade and they're not going to build another track there. 
And if you think there's a short track on there, I, I hope there is, but I, I doubt it's going to happen. So, mm-hmm. um, I don't know. We all like NASCAR. I, I assume that's part of why we're doing this. And right. even at the lackluster tracks, like support the sport. If it's local to, if you can get out to a race, like, in this time, and and I work in in the motorsports industry, and this stuff's getting tougher and tougher every year with with the EPA legislations and stuff like that. Like to be able to go to a racetrack and hear internal combustion engines, it's probably going to end in our lifetimes. So enjoy it while you can. We're yeah. going to fight for it as long as we can. But if you get to go watch a race with gas burning and tire burning take advantage of it while you can yep. man I, I, I hope it i hope it lasts forever because this is cars and racing is the most important thing in my life and i know it is for a, a, a lot of you guys too uh you, you don't know how good it is till it's gone yes. and that, that that's auto club man we didn't know how good we had it and now it's gone yep amen so I, w- I want to say one more thing is in kind of conjunction with that is also show your support to the league guys by going out to the, pro- uh, to the broadcast page on Facebook and YouTube, like those, share those out, tell your friends about the league. The more you share and more you like that helps us with the algorithms that pro- pulls in more viewers. The more viewers we have, the more I can sell that to potential sponsors. Alex, you can talk about this. I'm sure about how important views are. I've, I've preached on this for three years now and you know it seems like i'm still having to preach about it and there shouldn't be preaching being done like it should just be natural some you know 30 guys signed up for races we should have a minimum of 30 likes on our broadcast minimum easy and because we're the views are there i know people are watching i know that they're there but they're not they're just not hitting that like button and i don't understand why like it doesn't cost you anything it's not it's not hurting you in any way it's only helping you it's going to help sell this to to potential sponsors uh, even more. And, you know, at the end of the day, that's what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to bring this thing to the next level. And I can't do that without you guys helping by hitting the like button and sharing it and telling your friends. And here's what, what you heard was Jason saying, well, I'm trying to sell it to sponsors. And what you might think at first is, well, that's money that Jason's going to make. What it really means is it's going to trickle down to every single racer. We're going to, the broadcast is going to get better and better. The prize money, that's the main thing. The prize money is going to get better and better. If yes. we get more money coming in, more, more money, money I can, pay can out. flow outwards. So it's it's not just it's not just to make Jason rich or anything. Exactly. As you can tell, looking at him, he's the richest guy in the world. <laughs> but but on a serious note, like the the more you guys help grow the league, the more the league can provide for you. Exactly. That, that's, that's what it is. And that's kind of what sponsorship is in a nutshell. The more you give, the more you get. So and we're trying to show sponsors we have more to give. More and value. When they see that, then the more you're going to get. Yes, 100%. And because that's been the biggest down point, down sell, is that when you go to these potential sponsors, you're like, well, what can you do for us? Well, we, you know, we, we have 2,500 views every week on our Facebook and, uh, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's, that's little, little fish numbers. They want yep. big fish numbers that, you know, this is a big ass pond we're, we're fishing in here, boys. So they want big numbers and they want to see those, you know, in the tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands. And I know we can do it. I know that as a collective, it can be done. It's just how bad do you guys want? shit like this to get better do you want our prize money to go up do you want to have bit more payouts do you want to have more uh like gear that we can give you for winning and stuff like do you want more if you don't then i mean just keep doing what you're doing i guess but but if you do want more we'll close on this we need them the big boys and the big sponsors like wjm motorsports so cody send us out <laughs> oh god uh, <laughs> I loved. I knew if I put you on the spot, we're going to be in a bad, bad area. You're, you're an ass. Um, <laughs> first, we got Kinder Performance. Um, would love to see him keep racing in the cup, but I hope he does good with the cart stuff. Want to wish him the best of luck. We got Huffman Designs, Scott Fritz Designs, seeing the paints that they put out. 
they do awesome doodles job. and stuff. <laughs> Not top notch, but they're up there. They're um, fine. Want to say thanks to Butt Kicker. Stick around for the playoffs if you didn't make it. It's a great addition to have for your rig. Red Rocket Buildings and Barbecue, as Alex says. They sell buildings. They sell yes. barbecue. Yes. <laughs> what can't you like about that? You need a place to stay and you need a place to eat. Yep. Um, elevated outdoors. I'll kill the joke for Alex. Alex likes to be high. He likes to be <laughs> high. <Outside. in> <laughs> um, and then last, WJM. Um, we've got a lot going on there. If you guys want anything to see what we're doing, you can go to the website see what all we got going on i know we've got a few drivers who have been looking into it for the through bluegrass but just go look and see what we're doing doesn't hurt just to go look at the website yep go check it out that's the bearded man cody that's the hmf site yes, sir. hmf ic jason i'm two-time truck race winner alex healy that's the podcast